Hi folks, Jeff here. Today we're talking about geolocation. This discussion always starts with a Palo Alto Networks user asking the question, why is my firewall in the ocean? <laughs> it's an odd question, but the answer is geolocation. We have to understand how to configure a global location for our firewall and define where our traffic and threats that traverse that firewall are coming from. So this is the problem I'm talking about. By default, when we look in our monitor tab at either the traffic map or the threat map, we see that our firewall is in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> Obviously, it's not likely that our firewall is actually at this location, so we need to fix this. Also, we have this big green dot. This dot represents the traffic we've seen through the firewall. If we were to look at the traffic logs, we would see that the traffic is coming from a domain controller I have in my lab environment and has an RFC 1918 private address in the 192.168.45.0 slash 24 subnet. So how do we fix this? We'll need to set the geolocation for our firewall and for our private IP space. To do this, we'll need to talk a bit about how geolocation works and specifically how it's done on Palo Alto Networks devices. Then I'll show you the configuration and give you a few things to watch out for. Let's do a really quick navigation lesson so everyone is on the same page. First, let's go over some terms. Latitude is a measure of distance north or south of the equator, the center line of the Earth. Longitude is the distance east or west of the prime meridian, and a coordinate is a combination of those two numbers to give us a location on the planet. Coordinates are typically written as latitude first, then longitude, as you'll see in the examples below. When we talk about our coordinates, there's two formats I'm going to discuss today. The first is what most people know when it comes to coordinates, and that's the degrees, minutes, seconds, or DMS format. You'll see that in this format, along with specifying the degrees, minutes, and seconds, we also specify a direction. So in this case, we're using the coordinates for Palo Alto Networks headquarters in Santa Clara, California. The DMS coordinates are 37 degrees, 23 minutes, 2.1 seconds north, and 121 degrees, 58 minutes, 57.5 seconds west. The decimal degree format is a bit different. You'll notice that we don't specify a direction and that there's a negative number for the longitude. The actual coordinate is also different than the DMS format, even though it's the same location. That's because we do a conversion from DMS to DD format by dividing the minutes by 60 the seconds by 3600 and adding them together. Why does this matter? Well, many computer systems use the decimal degree format for geolocation, not the DMS format. This includes Palo Alto Networks firewalls. So let's see what this looks like on a world map. You've got the prime meridian running through Greenwich, England, and the equator at the midpoint between the northern and southern hemispheres. We also have a grid set at 30 degree increments, so every line east-west or north-south equals 30 degrees. When we look at the location for Palo Alto Networks headquarters in Santa Clara, California, we see that the coordinates are approximately 37 degrees north and 121 degrees west when using degree, minute, second notation. Also take note that both of these numbers are positive numbers. When we switch over to decimal degree notation, things change a bit. First, we have to do the conversion formula that I showed you earlier. Next, we have to take into account that we don't use direction as part of our notation. Since we don't use direction, we use positive or negative numbers to denote direction from the prime meridian or equator. So below the equator is a negative latitude number. Above is a positive latitude. The same goes for the prime meridian. West of the prime meridian is a negative longitude and east is a positive longitude. You don't need to memorize this, but it's important to understand the concept. 
So if we convert the Palo Alto Network's headquarters location from degree minute seconds format to decimal degree format, the degrees are the same, but the minutes and seconds change to a decimal format, and we go to a positive 37 degrees for latitude and a negative 121 degrees for longitude. If we left our longitude as a positive number, it would refer to a location in China, not Southern California. Again, you don't need to memorize this, just understand the concept. Once you understand the concept, you can use tools like Google Maps to give you the conversion without having to do the calculations yourself. To find the decimal notation format, enter your address, then right click on the location and select what's here. A smaller window will pop up that has the location, including decimal degree notation. We now have our coordinates and we're ready to put them into our firewall configuration. On the next generation firewall, to change the, the geolocation for the firewall itself, we'll go to Device, then Setup, and select the Management tab. After that, click on the gear icon for General Settings. Enter your longitude and latitude and click OK. Next, we're going to fix the private IP space our 192.168.45.0 slash 24 subnet. To do this, go to the Objects tab and then Regions and click Add in the lower left. You'll get this window to create a region and set a geolocation for your subnet. In this case, I'm putting the subnet in Plano, Texas at the other Palo Alto Network's corporate office. As a reminder, you only have to do this configuration with your private IP space. Palo Alto Networks has region locations already set up for public IP space. Once you've entered your region information, click OK, and then make sure you commit your configuration. You may have noticed when I've displayed and entered these coordinates, they've been numbers with up to four digits behind the decimal point. When you're doing this configuration, you may be asking how accurate do you need to be? Take a look at this chart. If you're trying to get down to something like a city block, then you need to go to at least two decimal places, but you may not need or want to go any closer. I'll leave the final decision on accuracy up to you. Now that we finished our configuration, let me give you two warnings. First, when you do your commit and go back to the traffic map, it will look like this. The firewall will have moved to its correct location, but not the private IP space. This is because the traffic stats take about 15 minutes to update all the reporting features in the next generation firewall, which include this traffic map. After that 15 minutes or so, the traffic map will look like this where we have our private IP space showing in two locations, the original location in the middle of the ocean and the new location that we've configured in the region settings. This is because the firewall sees this as a change at a certain point in time, namely 15 minutes ago. The traffic map is currently set to the last six hours, so the firewall will interpret this IP range to be at the Plano, Texas location for the last 15 minutes and in the middle of the ocean for the other five hours, 45 minutes. This issue only applies to the address ranges, not the firewall, so it can be a bit confusing. Just be aware that you won't see results for the first 15 minutes, and after that, results will seem a bit unusual. Just give this 24 hours or so, and everything should look fine. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please post them below. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay secure.